Hi, Bree. First one in. First one in is you, Bree. Here comes Rai Rai. <clears throat> Going on, Rye. Everybody rolling here. Whoa, jumping up here, Ali, Jackie Boy, Kira. Nice. It says eight. I don't see eight. Count six. There's nine. Daniel. Woohoo. Dini boy. Nice. Somebody else just clocked in. Ava. Ava, Ava. Tessa. Stop tearing everything apart. She's ripping apart every desk, this dog of mine. Aaliyah. <laughs> oh. You say hello to everybody? You want to say hello? Look, who's that guy? Who's this guy? Oh. No, 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 look. Over here, look this way. Look this way. Who are those guys? Who are these guys chiming in? Who are these guys? This puppy loves the quarantine. She thinks she's a princess now. Tell everybody you think you're a princess. You a princess? Are you a little princess? Oh, you so big. You're such a tough cookie. You say hello to everybody? You say hello to everybody? You say hello to everybody? You want to do some reading? You do some reading, Bubba? Damn it! Nice to see you comment on these things. She is cute, and she knows she's cute, but she's a terror. She just ran out of the room with my slipper. With my slipper. Pain in my neck that she is. What's up, Michael? Maddie? Who is that name? Which one of you guys is on the parent account? Oh, is that Adonis? I think that's Adonis. No, don't take the slipper. She's out of here already. She tried to grab my slipper again. Don't take a walk. French Bulldogs are the best, Daniel. Allie, I know. All these dogs love the quarantine. I hope you guys watched the uh, the math video that had all the answers. Answers. Uh, Adonis and I tried to go one-on-one -on -one with it this morning. It was very tough for both of us. So I figured extra help math video would be the best way to do it. Uh, if you didn't do that yet, you didn't hand in the map yet, watch the video. It has all the answers, 1 through 10. Don't watch the video for the answers, but watch it so you know how to solve it. Tomorrow you'll get another one like it, and uh, we'll go from there. Hero! Hero! I can be a hero, baby. That was, I nailed that one. <laughs> nice, Dean. Real nice. <laughs> All right, we ready to get started? Bobby's here. Nice. I'm sorry, Ava, about your dog. My dog had medicine also. Dylan, we've been missing you, boy. So happy to see you on here. What a great birthday celebration we had for you. Hope you had a great birthday.
I'm feeling very positive that we're going to get back to school one of these days. I don't know why I'm feeling this very, very positive that uh, we're going to be back together. That's my goal. Bobby, yours is April 29th, or is that when we're coming back? Uh, that's when we're coming back. That's my goal, Bobby. All right, so we're going to get started. we got a nice attendance today. A couple brothers, a couple sisters. I didn't see Isabella. Did you see Isabella? Where is Isabella? Let me see something here. Isabella. Isabella. Kalamaka. Where is she? Don't see her. Come on, Izzy. Izzy's always here. I don't see Julia Madonna either. Or oh, Christian. Those are regulars. We can have our record we get those guys here. Almost have the whole class. We're getting better. Come on. Let me see here. Allie, Ava, Bobby, Bree, Daniel, Dean, Aaliyah, Dylan, Donnie, Hera, Jack. Julia Madonna is here. Kira, Maddie, and Michael Johnson, and Ryan. No Preston, no Emily, and no Christian, and no Isabella. There's another name I'm missing. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen. I'm missing two of you. Who else is missing? Who else is missing? Preston, I said. Emily, I said. Christian, I said. Isabella, I said. Ju Ju Julia Ferrioli's not here? I just assumed she was here. Who else? We're missing one other name. Always do this. Who else? Maddie C. Those are six regulars that aren't here. Well, not six regulars, but four regulars. Let me see if they're having trouble on this side. Are we reading today? I don't see Julia. I don't see Maddie C, who's always here. Where is he, napping? We got Brianna. Brianna was excited about today. Christian was on it very early. All right, we can just hope that they chime in late. Oh, there's Julia. We got a Julia. We're glad Dean can type fast. We're working on Emily right now. We're working on Emily. Julia's here. I just saw her sign in. I don't know about Christian and Maddie C, though. Preston, I don't know either. Matt C was on the classroom. I know. I saw him. Okay. We're going to start anyway. So we remember that. Uh, who remembers the principal's name? Who remembers the principal's name? Hilarious name we remember. Mr. Tushman, you're right. Bobby, we get it. Thank you. Emily will be here. Just give her time. Mr. Tushman, Tushman, Tushman. Lots of Tushmans coming on. Okay, we're going to get started. Name of the chapter. Paging Mr. Tushman. Paging Mr. Tushman. Okay, here we go. Ready? Now we keep the sidebar to only stuff about the book. Very important. We keep our focus. I would have been more nervous about meeting Mr. Tushman if I'd known. I was also going to be meeting some kids from the new school, but I didn't know. So if anything, I was kind of giggly. I couldn't stop thinking about all the jokes Daddy had made about Mr. Tushman's name. So when me and mom arrived at Beecher Prep a few weeks before the start of school, I saw Mr. Tushman standing there waiting for us at the entrance. I started giggling right away. He didn't look at all like what I pictured, though I guess I thought he would have a huge butt, but he didn't. In fact, he was a pretty normal guy, tall, thin, old, but not really that old. He seemed nice. He shook mom's hand first. Welcome, Matt. Thank goodness. <clears throat> Hi, Mr. Tushman. It's so nice to see you again, said Mom. This is my son, August. 
Mr. Tushman looked right at me and smiled and nodded. He put his hand out for me to shake. Hi, August, he said, totally normally. It's a pleasure to meet you. Hi, I mumbled, dropping my hand into my hand while I looked down at his feet. He was wearing red Adidas. So, he said, kneeling down in front of me. So I couldn't look at his sneakers, but I had to look at his face. Your mom and dad have told me a lot about you. Like what have they told you? I asked. Sorry? Honey, you have to speak up, said mom. Like what? I asked, trying not to mumble. I admit I have a bad habit of mumbling. Well, that you like to read, said Mr. Tushman, and that you're a great artist. He had blue eyes with white eyelashes. And you're into science, right? Uh-huh, I said, nodding. We have a couple of great science electives at Beecher. He said, maybe you'll take one of them. Uh-uh, I said, though I had no idea what an elective was. So, are you ready to take a tour? You mean we're doing that now, I asked. Did you think we were going to the movies, he answered, smiling as he stood up. You didn't tell me we were taking a tour, I said to mom in my accusing voice. Augie, she, start, she started to say. It'll be fine, August, said Mr. Tushman, holding his hand out to me. I promise. I think he wanted me to take his hand, but I took mom's instead. He smiled and started walking toward the entrance. Mommy gave me a hand, my hand a little squeeze, though I didn't know if it was an I love you squeeze or an I'm sorry squeeze. Probably a little of both. The only school I had ever been inside before was Via's when I went with mom and dad to watch Via sing in spring concerts and stuff like that. This school was very different. It was smallest and it smelled like a hospital. Mrs. Garcia. We followed Mr. Tushman down a few hallways. There weren't a lot of people around and the few people who were, they didn't seem to notice me at all. Though that may not have been because they didn't see me. I sort of hid behind mom as I walked. I know that sounds kind of babyish, but I wasn't feeling very brave right then. I like the nickname Augie too. We ended up in a small room with the words office on the middle school director on the door. Inside there was a desk with a nice seeming lady sitting behind it. This is Mrs. Garcia, said Mr. Tushman. And the lady smiled at mom and took off her glasses and got up out of her chair. My mother shook her hand and said, Isabella Pullman, nice to meet you. And this is August, Mr. Tushman said. Mom kind of stepped to the side a bit so I would move forward. Then that thing happened, you know, that I've seen a million times before. When I looked up at her, Mrs. Garcia's eyes dropped for a second. When I looked up at her, it was so fast no one else would have noticed since the rest of her face stayed exactly the same. She was smiling. You know, one of those real shiny smiles. A shiny smile is like a fake smile. Like when you're uncomfortable, like, oh, nice to meet you. When you can tell it's fake, she's a little nervous. She saw him for the first time and she got a little scared. And her face then when she saw him, like blown away by what he looks like. Such a pleasure to meet you, August, she said, holding out her hand for me to shake. Hi, I said quietly, giving her my hand, but I didn't want to look at her face, so I kept staring at her glasses, which hung from a chain around her neck. Wow, what a firm grip, said Mrs. Garcia. Her hand was really warm. The kids got a killer handshake, Mr. Tushman agreed, and everyone laughed above my head. You can call me Mrs. G, Mrs. Garcia said. I think she was talking to me, but I was looking at all the stuff on her desk now. That's what everyone calls me, Mrs. G. I forget my combination, Mrs. G. I need a late pass. Mrs. G, I want to change my elective. Mrs. G, I want to switch my class. All the kids call me Mrs. G. Mrs. G actually runs the place, said Mr. Tushman, which again made all the grown-ups laugh. I'm here every morning by 7.30, Mr. 
Mrs. Garcia continued, still looking at me while I stared at her brown sandals with small purple flowers on the buckles. So if you ever need anything, August, I'm the one to ask, and you can ask me anything. Okay, I mumbled. Oh, look at that cute baby, Mom said, pointing to one of her photographs on Mrs. Garcia's bulletin board. Is he yours? No, my goodness, said Mrs. Garcia, smiling a big smile now. That was totally different from her fake, shiny smile. You just made my day. That is my grandson. What a cutie, said Mom, shaking her head. How old? In that picture, he was five months, I think. But he's big now, almost eight years old. Bobby, get control. Wow, said Mom, nodding and smiling. Well, he's absolutely beautiful. Thank you, said Mrs. Garcia, nodding like she was about to say something else about her grandson. But then all of a sudden, her smile got a little smaller. We're all going to take very good care of August, she said to Mom. And I saw her give Mom's hand a little squeeze. I looked at Mom's face, and that was when I realized she was just as nervous as I was. I guess I liked Mrs. Garcia when she wasn't wearing her shiny smile. Can I ask something? I noticed that Mrs. Garcia is wearing sandals and Mr. Tushman is wearing red Adidas. August has met two people today and he knows what shoes they're wearing. Is that something you normally know too? Why do you think he's aware of what shoes they're wearing? Anybody? I find this interesting. Why do you think or that he finds the need to tell us what shoes they're wearing? Why? I never know. I would have no clue if you were wearing socks. Never know. Why do you think he knows? Anybody have any reason? Just something in his personality? What do you have to do Aliyah's on it again. Dylan's on it because he's uncomfortable. He doesn't like making eye contact with people. So when that happens, he's looking down. And when he looks down, he sees people's feet and he's aware of what the feet they're wearing. Pretty cool. Good job, everyone who's answering. Maddie, good job. Good job, Julia. Dean, uh, Hira has it. Ava, very good. Okay, good. Okay. Guess what, guys? Unbeknownst to Augie, he's about to meet kids his own age right now, and he doesn't know it. How do you think this is going to go? Jack Will, Julian, and Charlotte. And yes, Jack Will is one name. Those are their names. We followed Mr. Tushman into a small room across from Mrs. Garcia's desk. He was taking, talking as he closed the door to his office and sat down behind his big desk, though I wasn't really paying much attention to what he was saying. I was looking around at all the things on his desk, cool stuff like a globe that floated in the air and a Rubik's type cube made with little mirrors. I liked his office a lot. I liked that there was all these neat little drawings and paintings by students on the walls, framed like they were important. Mom sat down in a chair in front of Mr. Tushman's desk, and even though there was another chair right next to hers, I decided to stand beside her. What do you have your own room and Mrs. Garcia does it, I said. You mean, why do I have an office, asked Mr. Tushman? You said she runs the place, I said. Oh, well, I was kind of kidding. Mrs. G is my assistant. Mr. Tushman is the director of the middle school, Mom explained. Do they call you Mr. T? I asked, which made him smile. Do you know who Mr. T is, he answered. I pitied a fool, he said in a funny, tough voice, like he was imitating someone. I had no idea who he was talking about. Do you guys know who Mr. T is? Ask your parents, like Doogie Hauser, they will know who Mr. T is and they will know what I pity the fool who come and talk to me like that. Mr. T was a rock star back in our era. He was an actor, had a mohawk. 
He was in Rocky Three. He was cool as can be. Everybody loved Mr. T. I had no idea what he was talking about. Most of you guys didn't either. Anyway, no, said Mr. Tushman, shaking his head. No one calls me Mr. T. Though I have a feeling I'm called a lot of other things I don't know about. Let's face it. With a name like mine, it's not easy to live with. You know what I mean? Here I have to admit I totally laughed because I knew exactly what he meant. My mom and dad had a teacher called Mrs. Butt, I said to him. Augie, said mom, but Mr. Tushman laughed. Now that's bad, said Mr. Tushman, shaking his head. I guess I shouldn't complain. Hey, so listen, Augie, here's what I thought we'd do today. Is that a pumpkin? I said, pointing to a framed painting behind Mr. Tushman's desk. Augie, sweetie, don't interrupt, said mom. You like it, said Mr. Tushman, turning around and looking at the painting. I do, too thought it was a pumpkin too until the student who gave it to me explained that it's actually not a pumpkin it is are you ready for this a portrait of me now august i ask you do i really look that much like a pumpkin no i answered though i was thinking yes something about the way he che his cheeks puffed when he smiled made him look like a jack-o-lantern just as i thought that it occurred to me how funny that was cheeks Mr. Tushman. And I started laughing a little. I shook my head and covered my mouth with my hand. Mr. Tushman smiled like he could read my mind. I was about to say something else, but then all of a sudden I heard other voices outside the office. Kids' voices. I'm not exaggerating when I say this, but my heart literally started beating out of my chest. Like I had just ran the longest race in the world. The laughter I had inside just poured out of me. The thing is, when I was little, I never minded meeting new kids because all the kids I met were really little too. What's cool about really little kids is that they don't say stuff to try to hurt your feelings, even though sometimes they do say stuff that hurts your feelings, but they don't actually know what they're saying. Big kids, though, they know what they're saying, and that is definitely not fun for me. One of the reasons I grew my hair long last year was that I like how my bangs cover my eyes. It helps me block out the things I don't want to see. Mrs. Garcia knocked on the door and poked her head inside. They're here, Mr. Tushman, she said. Who's here, I said. Thanks, said Mr. Tushman to Mrs. Garcia. August, I thought it would be a good idea for you to meet some students who will be in your homeroom this year. I figured they could take you around the school a bit, show you the lay of the land, so to speak. I don't, I don't want to meet anyone, I said to my mom. Mr. Tushman was suddenly right in front of me, his hands on my shoulders. He leaned down and said very softly in my ear, it'll be okay, August. They are nice kids, I promise. You're going to be okay, Augie, mom whispered with all her might. Before she could say anything else, Mr. Tushman opened the door to her to his office. Come on in, kids, he said, and walked two boys and a girl. None of them looked over at me or mom. They stood by the door looking straight at Mr. Tushman, like their lives depended upon it. Daniel, you're right. Nice kids. No adult really knows if you're a nice kid. Kids know nice kids. Kids know. Because kids don't always act nice in front of, I mean, they always act nice in front of adults. It's when the adults aren't there that you can tell they're nice kids. I hope all of you are nice kids. <clears throat> Thanks so much for coming, guys, especially since school doesn't start until next month, said Mr. Tushman. Have you had a good summer so far? All of them nodded, but no one said anything. Great, great, said Mr. Tushman. So, guys, I wanted you to meet August, who's going to be a new student here this year. August, these guys have been students at Beecher Prep since kindergarten. Though, of course, they were in the lower school building, but they know all the ins and outs of the middle school program. 
And since you're all in the same homeroom, I thought it'd be nice if you got to know each other a little before school started. Okay. So kids, this is August. August, this is Jack Will. Jack Will looked at me and put his hands out, put out his hand. When I shook it, he kind of half smiled and said, hey, and looked down really fast. This is Julian, said Mr. Tushman. Hey, said Julian. I did the same exact thing as Jack Will. Took my hand, forced a smile, and looked down real fast. And this is Charlotte, said Mr. Tushman. Charlotte had the blondest hair I'd ever seen. She didn't shake my hand, but gave me a quick little wave and smiled. Hi, August. Nice to meet you, she said. Hi, I said, looking down. She was wearing bright green Crocs. So, said Mr. Tushman, putting his hands together in a kind of slow clap. What I thought you guys could do is take August on a little tour of the school. Maybe you could start on the third floor. That's where your homeroom class is going to be. Room 301, I think. Mrs. G is... Room 301, Mrs. Garcia called out from the other room. Room 301, Mr. Tushman nodded. And then you could show August the science labs in the computer room. Then work your way down to the library and the performance space on the second floor. Take him to the cafeteria, of course. Should we take him to the music room? Asked Julian. Good idea. Yes, said Mr. Tushman. August, do you play any instruments? Yeah, right now everyone's, everyone's being just in good moods. Where are you going? Okay. Okay. Sorry, guys. So August is, you know, being nice. You know, nothing, nothing crazy yet. No, I said it wasn't my favorite subject on account of the fact that I don't really have ears. He doesn't really have ears. He has eardrums, but he doesn't have ears. It's just flat. So you get a little more visual of what he might look like. <laughs> well, I do, but they don't exactly look like normal ears. Well, you may enjoy seeing the music room anyway, said Mr. Tushman. We have a very nice selection of percussion instruments. August, you've been wanting to learn to play the drums, Mom said, trying to get me to look at her. But my eyes were covered by my bangs as I stared at a piece of old gum that was stuck to the bottom of Mr. Tushman's desk. Great. Okay. So why don't you guys get going, said Mr. Tushman. Just be back here in, he looked at Mom. 30 minutes, half hour, okay? I think Mom nodded. So is that okay with you, August, he asked me. I didn't answer. Is that okay, August, mom repeated. I looked at her now. I wanted her to see how mad I was at her. But then I saw her face and just nodded. She seemed more scared than me. The other kids had started out the door, so I followed them. See you soon, said mom, her voice sounding a little higher than normal. I didn't answer her. Yeah, he's got longer hair. Listen, he's got a really disfigured face. It's really, uh, it, things are out of place and things aren't even there. That's And there's, there's actually people who live that have life like this. Uh, what you guys don't understand, and it's very hard to understand, is he might be mad at his mom, but his, his mom just wants the best for him. She wants him to, listen, I'm, you got to learn to do these things. You got to. And most times when you guys are starting something new, your parents are more scared than you. Your parents are in pain, just wishing and hoping and praying that you're going to be okay. That's really all they care about. I didn't know that as a kid, but I know as a parent, when my kids are starting something new or they're nervous about something, I'm nervous times 10. I don't let them see it, but believe me, we are. Matt, interesting you say that. I used to play against a kid who didn't have an arm at all in soccer, and he was the best soccer player in, in Suffolk County. He only had one arm. He was amazing. His name was Chris Zucklich. He was unstoppable. He didn't need an arm. And remember, he was born that way, this, this guy Chris was. So he, he didn't know what it was like to have two arms. So he dominated with one arm because that's what he was used to. You always find, and Augie says it best, all those people that have any kind of thing that's unique or different, they don't feel different. They feel like you and I do. We treat them differently. So we had to do a better job and not feeling bad or sorry because they don't want you to feel bad or sorry for them because they feel just fine. 
Try to remember that when, when you run into somebody that is a little different or unique than you are because they don't want sympathy from you. They don't need it. They're doing just fine and they want to be treated ordinary. That's the key. Holy cow. Emily just did something here. That's very cool. Very exciting. Okay. So maybe we can get her on to this. All right. Should we do one more chapter? 30 minutes in? We'll do one more. Because I want to get, I want you to uh, get a feeling for the kids that he's going to be going to school with. Okay, I want to leave you with that. Jack, Will, Julian, Charlotte, and I went down a big hallway to some wide stairs. <laughs> no one said a word as he walked up to the third floor. When we got to the top of the stairs, we went down a little, halfway full of lots of doors. Hall, excuse me, hallway full of lots of doors. Julian opened the door. Mark 301. This is our homeroom, he said, standing in front of the half-open door. We have Mr. Mrs. Potosa. They say she's okay, at least for homeroom. I heard she's really strict if you get her for math, though. That's not true, said Charlotte. My sister had her last year, and she's totally nice. It's not what I heard, answered Julian. But whatever. He closed the door and continued walking down the hallway. This is the science lab, he said when he got to the next door. And just like he did two seconds ago, he stood in front of the half-open door and started talking. He didn't look at me once while he talked, which was okay because I wasn't looking at him either. You won't know who you have for science until the first day of school, but you want to get Mr. Haller. He used to be in the lower school. He would play this giant tuba in class. He was a, it was a baritone horn, said Charlotte. It was a tuba answered Julie in closing the door. Dude, can you let him go inside so we can check it out? Jack Will told him, pushing past Julian and opened the door. Go inside if you want, Julian said. It was the first time he looked at me. I shrugged and walked over to the door and Julian moved out of the way quickly, like he was afraid for me to even touch him. God forbid I might accidentally touch him as I passed by. Nothing much to see, Julian said, walking in after me. He started pointing to a bunch of stuff around the room. That's the incubator. That's the big back black thing in the chalkboard. There are the desks. There are the chairs. Those are the Bunsen burners. This is a gross science poster. This is chalk. This is an eraser. I'm sure he knows what an eraser is, Charlotte said, sounding a little like Via. <laughs> How would I know what he knows, Julian answered. Mr. Tushman said he's never been to school before. You know what an eraser is, Charlotte asked me, right? I admit I was feeling so nervous that I didn't know what to say or do except look at the floor. Hey, can you talk? Asked Jack Will. Yeah, I nodded. I still really hadn't looked at any of them yet, not directly. You know what an eraser is, right? Asked Jack Will. Of course, I mumbled. I told you there was nothing to see in here, said Julian, shrugging. I have a question, I said, trying to keep my voice steady. Uh, what exactly is homeroom? Is that like a subject? No, that's just your group, explained Charlotte, ignoring Julian's smirk. It's like when you go when you get to school in the morning and your homeroom teacher takes attendance and stuff like that. In a way, it's your main class, even though it's not really a class. I mean, it's a class, but... I think he gets it, Charlotte, Jack Will said. Do you get it? Charlotte asked me. Yeah, I nodded at her. <laughs> That's funny here. He's never been to school, Bobby. He was homeschooled. Difference, right? His mom taught him. Okay, let's get out of here, said Jack Will, walking away. Wait, Jack. We're supposed to be answering questions, said Charlotte. Jack Will rolled his eyes a little as he turned around. Do you have any more questions, he asked. Uh, no, I answered. Oh, well, actually, yes. Is your name Jack or is it Jack Will? Jack is my first name and Will is my last name. Oh, because Mr. Tushman introduced you as Jack Will. So I thought, ha, you thought his name was Jack Will? Laughed Julian. Yeah, some people call me by my first and last name, Jack said, shrugging. I don't know why. Anyway, can we get going now? Let's go to the performance space next, said Charlotte. 
leading the way out of the science room. It's very cool. You'll like it, August. So you're getting a little feel. You know what? We'll go one more. It's only two chapters. A little bit more of, uh, of how the kid's behavior is. So you understand going into the next couple chapters what they're going to be like. Charlotte basically didn't stop talking as we headed down to the second floor. She was describing the play they had put on last year, which was Oliver. She played Oliver, even though she's a girl. As she said this, she pushed open the double doors to a huge auditorium. At the other end of the room was a stage. Charlotte started skipping toward the stage. Julian ran after her and then turned around halfway down the aisle. Come on, he said loudly, waving for me to follow him, which I did. There were like hundreds of people in the audience that night, said Charlotte. And it took me a second to realize she was still talking about Oliver. I was so nervous. I had so many lines and I had all these songs to sing. It was so, 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 so hard. Although she was talking to me, she really didn't look at me much. On opening night, my parents were all the way in the back of the auditorium, like where Jack is right now. But when the lights were off, you can't really see that far back. So I was like, where are my parents? Where are my parents? And then Mr. Resnick, our theater arts teacher last year, he said, Charlotte, stop being such a diva. Hmm. And I was like, okay. And then I spotted my parents and I was totally fine. I didn't forget a single line. So Charlotte is fun, a little bit of a bragger. Everything's about her. You know, you, you've all met people like that. We've all met Charlotte's in our life, but she's not mean. While she was talking, I noticed Julian staring at me out of the corner of his eye. This is something I see people do a lot with me. They think I don't know they're staring. But I can tell from the way their heads are tilted. I turned around to see where Jack Will was. He had stayed in the back of the auditorium like he was bored. We put on a play every year, said Charlotte. I don't think he's going to want to be in the school play, Charlotte, said Julian sarcastically. You could be in the play without actually being in the play, Charlotte answered, looking at me. You could do the lighting. You can paint the backdrops. Oh, yeah, whoopee, said Julian, twirling his finger in the air. <whistles> but you don't have to take theater arts if you don't want to, Charlotte said, shrugging. There's dance or there's chorus, there's band, there's leadership. Only dorks take leadership, Julian interrupted. Julian, you're being so obnoxious, said Charlotte, which made Julian laugh. I'm taking the science elective, I said. Cool, said Charlotte. Julian looked directly at me. The science elective is supposedly the hardest elective of all, he said. And no offense, but have you never, ever been in school before? Why do you think you're suddenly going to be smart enough to take the science elective? I mean, have you ever even studied science before? Like real science, not like the kind you do with kits. Yeah, I nodded. He was homeschooled, Julian, said Charlotte. So teachers came to his house, asked Julian, looking puzzled. No, his mother taught him, ans answered Charlotte. Is she a teacher? Julian said. Is your mother a teacher? Charlotte asked him. No, I said. So she's not even a real teacher, said Julian, as if that proved his point. That's what I mean. How could someone who's not a real teacher actually teach science? I'm sure he'll do fine. I'm sure you'll do fine, looking at me, Charlotte said. Let's just go to the library, Jack called out, sounding really bored. Why is your hair so long, Julian said to me. He sounded like he was annoyed with my hair. I didn't know what to say, so I just shrugged. Can I ask you a question? He said, I shrugged again. Didn't he just ask me a question? What's the deal with your face? I mean, were you in a fire or something? Julian, that's so rude, said Charlotte. I'm not being rude, said Julian. I'm just asking a question. Mr. Tushman said we could ask questions if we wanted to. I'm just asking what happened.
Not rude quest questions like that, said Charlotte. Besides, he was born like that. That's what Ms. Tushman said. You just weren't listening. I was so listening, said Julian. I just thought maybe there was a fire too. That Julian is on a, he's, he's rough. He's rough. Jeez, Julian, said Jack. Just shut up. You shut up, Julian yelled back. Come on, August, said Jack. Let's go to the library already. So Jack had had it at this point. He's had it. He's just shut up, man. And you know, I hate that word, but it might have been appropriate for this time. I walked toward Jack and followed him out of the auditorium. He held the double doors open for me. And as I passed by, he looked at me right in the face, kind of daring me to look back at him, which I did. Then I actually smiled. I don't know. Sometimes when I have the feeling like I'm almost going to cry, it can turn into almost laughing feeling. And that must have been the feeling I was having then because I smiled almost like I was going to giggle. The thing is, because of the way my face is, people don't know me very well. Don't always get that I'm smiling. My mouth doesn't go up at the corners the way other people's mouths do. It just goes straight across my face. But somehow, Jack Will got that I smiled at him and he smiled back. Hey, Julian's a jerk, he whispered before Julian and Charlotte reached us. But dude, you got to talk. He said this seriously like he was trying to help me. I nodded as Julian and Charlotte caught up to us. We were all quiet for a second. All of, it, all of us just kind of nodding, looking at the floor. Then I looked up at Julian. By the way, Julian, the word is supposedly, by the way, I said, what are you talking about? You said over there, supposedly. I did not. Yeah, you did, Charlotte nodded. You said the science elective is supposedly really hard. I heard you. I absolutely did not, he insisted. Whatever, said Jack. Let's just go. So he showed he's correcting his grammar. Augie's giving a little jab to Julian. You know, I'm not smart. I didn't go to school. By the way, let me correct your grammar. Yeah, let's go, agreed Charlotte, following Jack down the stairs to the next floor. I started to follow her, but Julian cut right in front of me, which actually made me stumble backwards. Oops, sorry about that, said Julian. But I could tell from the way he looked at me that he wasn't really sorry at all. I hope, I hope, and this is where you know about kids or not. And this is where you really grow to learn about, about how you feel inside when you hear things like that. Uh, it should anger you. It should make you want to lash out like Jack Will did in a way. It should make you feel, because you all know people like that. We've all seen people like that. And what I love about Jack Will is that he's not a sheep. He's not just going along and following whatever's going on. He's got his own mind and he's going to stand up to Julian. But here's the issue. And you, you might wonder the same thing. Why would Mr. Tushman pick someone like Julian to give the tour? You can see why Charlotte was picked. It seems like Jack Will's a pretty good guy. Why would Mr. Tushman pick Julian to be on this tour? Why do you think there's only one answer? Why do you think Mr. Tushman would have Julian on this tour? Very interesting question I have. Bobby's on it. Hera's on it. Guys, unfortunately, when you turn a certain age, in life, as much as I think I'm a big kid and I can get it, and I think I get it more than most adults, there are tons of kids that fool adults into us thinking that they're the perfect kid and that they're wonderful and sweet. And kids are probably like, what, why is Mr. Kavanaugh blind? Does he not see what goes on? 
I'm sure you guys have said that before, or I'm sure it's been said about me before. And I like to think that I know everything about kids. Adults don't know everything. And we have a lot of faith in children. That's why we're teachers that we trust a lot of the time what they're showing us. But the best judge of character, boys and girls, is you. Kids know better. Kids just know better. Uh, so make sure you know, even Mr. Tushman, who seemed like a great guy, completely fooled by Julian because he made this trip not very pleasant for Augie. And, and, and you guys are sitting here. I see on the side, everyone's so angry and mean. And, ah, I'm so angry at Julian. I, I hate Julian. I get it. But these people exist in the world, and the only way that they stop existing is if we stop letting them have control over things and making people feel bad and that we don't become sheep, but we stand up for our friends or even we stand up for anybody that's that's being intimidated or being made to feel less equal. Very interesting. But we're going to end there today. Uh, as far as I know, we have school tomorrow. I know tomorrow is Good Friday, and it's a, normally we would be off, but uh, I believe we have school. I'm going to keep it very light, though. On a Friday, I'm going to keep Friday light. We'll do a little math review. We'll read. I'll give you a break uh, with science tomorrow. We'll take a break with science. So we'll, we'll, we'll take one subject off tomorrow. All right, guys. It looks like the sun came out just in time for you to run, maybe run out if you're going out. Or maybe at least look out. So I'm going to be hanging out in my backyard. Just enjoy the sun a little bit. And that's about it. I wish we could do more. But remember, stay home. Stay safe. And we'll be back together again soon. Love you guys.